Hello, everyone, and welcome to Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. My name is Brent Rain. I'm the host. And today I have Jeff Leggett from Disability Action of Canada joining me on the show. Hello, Jeff, and welcome hey, back Brent. to the show. Hey, Brent. Great how to, you doing? How great, you great, have to, uh, great to have you on. Yeah, it's great to be on. Sorry, I missed the other I'm day. I'm wearing my bright uh, uh, Canada, uh, red Canada. Yay! Yay. Yay, <laughs> Yay! And all yeah. the other issues go along with it. Yeah, we had yeah. that discussion at the church lately about whether or not we're going to have the Canadian flag up by itself, mm -hmm. along with the uh, "Every Child Matters" for the first for our First Nations brothers and sisters, uh, because the Canadian flag doesn't it means a lot to different means different things to different people, mm -hmm. especially now with all these freedom people. It means a little bit more harsher. It comes across as a little more harsher than it did before, like about five years ago. So mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting to have that. But, I, but for kids, Canada Day is beautiful. How was your weekend? Yeah. I, it was actually really good. Uh, my weekend uh, was actually pretty quiet, but it was actually really good. And I was visualizing the uh, the disability logo on the Canadian flag. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, that yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, represent, like you know, the Canadians across the country that, you know, that are left well, well below poverty level in, in a very wealthy nation, Jeff. Uh, there's there's no room for poverty. It needs to be, uh, you know, eradicated, uh, you know, uh, eradicated away, right? So, yeah. You know, I, I was thinking the same thing when I was going through my social media, and I kind of, I don't like to really uh, post or tag much on these big week, uh, these big uh, holiday things. Yeah. Because it gives, it, I come across all the, the, the media photo ops for all these politicians and how gorgeous and wonderful Canada is and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I don't want to be cynical, but you got to make it wonderful for everybody or it's not wonderful at all in mm -hmm. my mind. Uh, if we haven't made recon reconciliation for First Nations, if we're still keeping people in poverty, government imposed legislative poverty, especially uh, disabled people, seniors, veterans, uh, mm -hmm. people who are on welfare, welfare through no fault of their own, uh, people uh, who aren't able to find a job uh, because of stigmas or what have you, or, or mental health issues or concerns. If this Canada isn't a, a wonderful country for all, then shut up and get back to work and then do mm -hmm. the photo ops when it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when they're cutting the cake, you know, to celebrate Canada Day. Meanwhile, people are starving in, in the in the country and saying, well, they, oh, they could only wish to have a piece of cake. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and that, that, it's that thing, you don't have cake and eat it too. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's the simplest things like that when people are yeah. poor and people go to these festivities and have cake and barbecues and stuff like that, they take it for granted. Well, yeah. the poor people can't afford anything. They have to pick and choose on, you know, taking medication, pay, buying food, uh, uh, you know, paying the rent. I mean, and rent, I mean, you know, that'll be, I guess, a topic that we'll dive right into here. I mean, rents across the country are just outrageously high. Well, well of, I'm, so sorry, Brent. I, can I stop you, though? Yeah. Did, did, we, did we want to do a debrief with the uh, Sheila Malcolmson uh, meeting first, first before sure. diving into rent? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we'll do yeah. that first. Yeah. I just I just wondered about the order of operations. I wondered if the yeah. Sheila Malcolmson would be more important to deal with first. I, I think yeah, yeah, I think I agree with you, Neil. I think yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about the debriefing first, and then we'll get into yeah, we'll, we'll kind of talk about housing after. Okay. Can I start that, Brent? Sure. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it, Jeff. Brent, Sonny, and I had a wonderful meeting with uh, our Minister in of Social Development and Poverty Reduction, the Honorable Sheila Malcolmson, who represents Nanaimo uh, region. And it was an interesting meeting because we've been trying to get a hold of our meet with people that are in charge of our department for PWD for the last number of years, four or five years. Uh, and this was the first successful meeting, sit down one on one to have an earnest conversation with the concerns uh, associated with government imposed legislative poverty of disabled Canadians. And it was interesting because she was feeling us out and we were feeling her out to try yep. to feel to try to figure out how we eat, we're each going to benefit benefit from this meeting mm -hmm. and with three topics uh sonia had a couple of questions brand uh, had a wonderful suggestion about rent which we'll get to 
And we also talked about poverty level and we need to get everybody up to poverty level, uh, persons with disabilities. And that can be done so many different ways. It can be done by layering is the first uh, way we talked about it. Layering means this, the, the provincial disability uh, uh, support plus your CPP, plus your wages if you're able to earn any money yourself, either if it's working one day a week or one day every two weeks or, or more than that. Whatever that is, it has to layer up to equal no less than poverty level. So we're getting about fifteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month right now. We're not getting fifteen yet. God, I mean, that's next month or something. We're getting about fourteen. I'm I'm getting fourteen ten or fourteen thirty five a month because um, I don't have a bus pass. Um, plus, I make about four hundred dollars a month in my church work. So I mean, I make about eighteen thirty five a month. Well, the poverty level uh, we also talked about, I, I go for LECO, low income cutoff table, uh, mm -hmm. but the government made it very clear that they're going to be aligning with the, the uh, federal government and recognizing MBM as mm -hmm. the, uh, the poverty level. Do you want to explain what MBM is, uh, Brent? Yeah, uh, MBM is the market basket measure. It's based on a, a total household income in general. And then you have to break it down. I mean, the stats show a household of four people, right? So now you got to break it down into individual person because an individual person, that's their, that's their income, right? I mean, it shouldn't be based on a whole household income. Uh, and really the numbers get all misconstrued then because LICO is very straightforward. It's, uh, it's cut and dry. That's, that's the amount because really uh, the LICO amount was what the prime minister said during COVID. Right, two thousand dollars for CERB, that's the LICO amount. Yeah. And so going forward, we should be at like uh, that was twenty twenty. So twenty twenty one formula was twenty two oh two. So now twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three. So we should be like twenty six, like twenty six. You know, I mean, or I mean, yeah, like twenty six hundred, right? I mean, twenty four to twenty six hundred. So, yeah. So if they're going to go with MBM, that's a lot less than than that actual amount. I, I think that they're almost like they're going to go with seniors. Like it's going to be kind of geared to what the seniors amount is. Uh, For those well, that don't well, know, low well, income. I, sorry, I was going to, sorry, I was going to say that, uh, I mean, this should come as a surprise though. Like uh, whenever it comes to anything that's disability related or PD, PWD advocacy, it's always like uh, this weird uh, perverted, like pink unicorn math, right? It's it's ne it's never it's never uh, straightforward like you know one plus one equals two it's like pink unicorn math of uh, one plus one equals minus five you know and it's just like what yeah MBM is also based on region LECO right. is based on Canada LECO yeah. LECO table is also what the government recognizes and utilizes for refugee. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of our church, we um, uh, sponsor a refugee every couple of years from uh, war-torn countries or countries in, 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 dis, uh, in disarray. Uh, and the government says to us, you have to put aside um, $26,400. That's the low-income cutoff amount. This is from, this is from 2019 uh, mm -hmm. or 2021. 20, 2021. This is from 2021. This is the amount you have to put aside. Because that's the poverty level in Canada for, for uh, new immigrants. Mm -hmm. But the poverty level in Canada for Canadians who are disabled, well, that's lower. So uh, that's the MBM. And that's uh, based on where you live. If you live in a big city, if you live in a small town, if you live in Manitoba, if you live in Ontario, it's all different. It's most ridiculous yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to get a kind of a patchwork system, like, you know, different amounts for every area rather than just flat amount. I mean, God forbid, if you if you profit a little bit more because you you live in a, a higher priced area region versus an area, maybe it's kind of rural where cost of living may be a little bit lower. And but meanwhile, you now you go into visit into say you visit into a area of a PWD who are maybe the cost of living is higher. So now you have your income. But they now you're now less off because now the cost of living is even higher. So that you're actually getting the short end of the stick. And we yeah. all know nowadays, if you're trying to rent a, a, a one bedroom apartment in Halifax or Saskatchewan, Regina or Saskatoon or Kamloops in BC or Brandon, Manitoba, there ain't much different. It's all 20. It's all way up there. Two thousand yep. dollars a month. 
they, they don't have the difference we used to have 20 years ago where, right. they, where it used to be cheaper to live in Eastern Canada or it used to be cheaper to live in Saskatchewan. You go and Google it, it's all across the board. It's expensive left to right. So I don't know. This is an archaic uh, measure of uh, poverty level, but that's what we're going to go with. And that's fine. So if we look at it, it's based on about twenty-four dollars to $25,000 a month, uh, a year is the market ba- um uh, market what's it called mbm market basket measure that's it um so it's about 24 to twenty five thousand, which is still over two thousand dollars a month uh uh for persons with disabilities is there any province in canada that's, that's receiving that amount i think Zero. maybe maybe yukon does yukon yeah, get it yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's because yeah. it's all skewed up there with prices yeah but yeah, yeah there's not, Price there's not a rate. single yeah there's not a single uh, uh, province making that so far. Alberta is the best, uh, like 1700 or something. So right now, that's what we talked about. We talked about uh, no clawbacks. We talked about uh, the provinces not, instead of clawing back CPP uh, and just giving them disability provincial rates, let them get up to poverty level, let each disabled person get to poverty level before you even think about clawing back. Mm-hmm. It's like taking food out of a hungry person's hand. Uh, yeah. in the province is taking food out of the hungry person's hand. It's ridiculous. Let's get to poverty level before we even consider clawbacks. The third part was we talked about um, uh, individual, consider each person as an individual. So there's no partner financial considerations. So if you're mm-hmm. in a relationship with somebody, your their income, their financial income or uh, uh, portfolio has nothing to do with you. You're an mm-hmm. individual. You're a singular uh, um, autonomous person with disability and you should be afforded no less mm-hmm. than poverty level with regardless of who you are in a relationship or not in a relationship with. Neil, what do you think on that? Yeah, that's uh, sounds good to me. Like, I mean, I, you know that i'm the clawback guy and i that just really bugs me you know that uh it's even a thing you know (laughs) it's just it's just it's just crazy i mean uh, the when you didn't uh show up the other day brent and i just winged it like he said and uh and uh i made the i made the point that it's like uh with the government it's like provincial government it's like uh robin hood in reverse where they steal from the they steal from the poor (laughs) <laughs> you yeah. know, and gift to yep. the rich, you know, like the you know, nickel just, and dime the poor, nickel and dime, yeah. it's like ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and especially, you know, also with the, you know, the cost of living and it's so high. I mean, yeah. you know, imagine like two people in one household or, or better yet, if because rents are so high. So in some cases, you can get like four or five people living in one place. Now, according to the government, they're actually all t- together. They're actually together. If you're in a, 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 a cohabit uh, uh, relationship with a bunch of people around you, they classify that as now you are now dependent together. Uh, um, so what, what do they do? So you have like five people going, okay, one file for five people? Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. You, leave up to it's, them. They would probably do that too. It's just strange. We, we have to uh, really uh, impress upon the government that a person with disability is an autonomous person with disability. Yeah. It should be considered as such financially and with dignity and with respect. We haven't yeah. even gotten to the we haven't even gotten to the to the stigma of having a disability in this province. We're still just focusing on getting financial support up to mm-hmm. a level which is respectable, dignified, and does not leave us at the food bank every single week. Well, the financial acts aspect is a, is a stigma part of it, right? I mean, the whole par- the whole poverty equation is stigma. I mean, it's all baked in, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it so. is. The and, amount- and that's the unfortunate part is uh, when people should be able to, well, people should be able to make a decision that's based on what their needs are, not yeah. with what the government's needs, what they think is better. It's lived experience, right? It's what what the person. Uh, knows what what their abilities are, what what they want to accomplish, what they want to have in their life, mm-hmm. and being told, well, you need to go and, and apply for a crisis supplement for food because we're not going to give you more, but you can only have it once once per month, and here's a little tiny bit. But now, why do you need it? Why are you not budgeting better? Yeah, really? Yeah. No, absolutely. or go to the food bank. Go to the food bank here. You know, absolutely. 
have, they don't. have, have right. some expired food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Best before date. Yeah. Brent had a good idea. We also talked about housing. We talked about subsidized housing. You're being on a list for five to 10 years before you even are considered or before you even get a phone call that might be something in your area for subsidized housing. Yeah. I've been on subsidized housing for five years of the list and I've never heard from them. I don't contact them every six months. It's like they don't exist and I don't exist. Uh, so I'm paying market rent. Um, but we talked about, uh, he had a, Brent, you had a wonderful idea yeah. that the government should be uh, seriously looking into. Yeah. So here's the idea that I came up with uh, to the Honorable Minister, uh, Sheila Malcolmson, and uh, who is the uh, MLA for Nanaimo, British Columbia. Um, we met with the minister. Uh, it was a great meeting. Um, so the idea that I came up with, and, and you're right, Jeff, uh, there's such a long waiting list uh, to get into subsidized housing. Right now, last thing I was told is that it's indefinite. Mm. It's well, well, way over 10 years. The the myth used to be 10 years, oh, it's a waiting list. Now that's just, it's blowing right out there. It's There's so many people that are need housing. And uh, you're right, like, you got to check in every six months to find out, hey, where am I on the list? They don't even know where people are on the list. They say, well, just keep on checking in. So what I stumbled across an idea, and I, I'll, I'll mention to you, uh, like everybody, what the meeting was, but why I came up with this idea is because uh, a couple, about three years ago, I actually had made a phone call. I, you know, I've been in market rent and uh, paying corporate landlords their nice hefty fee so that their investors can keep them happy. And yeah, and you know, when you move out, the rent goes up. You move out, another person. And I don't, you know, just change the lock on the door, right? Jack up the rent, uh, touch it up, uh, buffer it up a bit maybe, right? So I made a phone call because they used to have that rent bank. They had this rent bank program. Now it's nowhere to be, you know, mm -hmm. don't hear nothing yeah. about it. So I made a phone call. I said, well, what is this all about? Oh, well, where do you, where do you live? Well, I live in Langley. Oh, the closest one's in New Westminster. Oh, okay. So good. I'll, I'll, no, no, no. You have to be in New Westminster to, to qualify to get it. Oh, that would require me to move. I'd be paying higher rent. Okay. Well, you know, uh, I actually worked for BC Housing. Really? The lady actually worked for BC Housing also. So I said, okay, well, how do I get into subsidized housing? You, you can't just get out of market housing and go into subsidized housing. It doesn't work that way. Why not? Because it doesn't. You'd have to be homeless. Excuse me. You would have to be homeless, sir. In a, and, and then, you, you know, you have to basically prove the reason why you need it. Why, so now you're homeless. Did you leave your home just to become homeless to get into it? Now they're going to start questioning that. So Sonia said, well, I have a health condition. No, that doesn't matter. No, that doesn't even qualify anymore. They take they take a family with children as a priority, and then they go down the ladder. So I kept in my mind about this, Jeff, and everyone watching this says, I thought, okay, there's something wrong here, like totally wrong. The system is totally messed up where people are having to wait so long just so they can have cheaper housing. They can put that money back into the economy where they live, or maybe they want to go and venture out somewhere else and put that money into to another economy to help is small businesses, not corporations, small businesses, because they need the money. Corporations don't because they don't pay tax in this country. So uh, a lot of them don't, some do. Um, so I gotta be careful on that. There are some that do, yes, but there are some that don't and we need to obviously work with that. Or don't so pay fair taxes. They don't pay fair taxes, absolutely. So in the meeting when I, we had, I came up with the idea that people that are, that PWD that are in market, that pay market housing, uh, rent to their corporate landlords, or maybe it's an individual owned um, you know, property owner who maybe has one apartment, two apartments, and they're just a small one. Now the big ones, the uh, corporations try to gobble them up, right? Take them away. I think that PWD should have the opportunity of having the same income uh, um, qualifications that they do in subsidized housing, having rent geared to income, which is technically 30% of your income. But now people look at it, 30% or rent geared income is the same thing. And uh, that way people can actually stay home, stay housed. They can stay housed, get them or get them into that housing, into the market housing. Maybe they love living where they live and they just, but they can't pay that market rent because the cost of living is going so high. Exactly. And what it, what it basically means is that the government's now subsidizing their, their rent. Now, seniors have it. Now, this is the point I said to uh, Ms. Uh, um, 
Malcolmson here is seniors have that program. Um, single mothers, single fathers, if they apply for a rental assistance uh, program, it's called RAP. You know, not the not the RAP. You know, <laughs> it, it, R R A P. And the yeah. other one for seniors is called Safers. And a lot of people know that that's what it is. I'm trying to decipher what the name stands for. Right, top of my head, I'm not sure, but it's a Safers. It's a seniors program under umbrella of BC Housing. So yeah. seniors have it. Single mothers, single fathers have it, and PWD need to have it. Yeah. Here's a little quirk in the system. The problem is that PWD and market housing don't qualify for it because they have that $375 shelter allowance, which now disqualifies them from it. If they're in subsidized housing, they qualify. Yeah. So we need to remove that 375 equation uh, completely out of it. We can call it, uh, we, I don't know, we can call it king, king, of, king of, of the province uh, for PWD. We can call it whatever we want, pink unicorn. We yeah. can call it anything we want, PWD uh, out of legislative poverty. Yeah. I mean, whatever we want to call it, you guys, everybody watching, um, that way PWD can qualify for it. And it's so easy to extend that program across the board. And people then in PWD will have enough money for their meds. They have yeah. enough money for their food. They have enough money for their transportation. They have enough money for their rent yeah. because now they're just paying that amount that's a maybe a smaller portion for $400, $500 for their rent, maybe, or maybe less. Now the government will subsidize that. They get that, plus they check from the government, they give it to their landlord. The government, they, the landlord's still fine. They're still getting their money. Yeah. And people can now put that money into, I, I don't know, uh, maybe they want to go and buy a small little car. Yeah. Maybe they want to go and travel. Mm -hmm. Oh, God forbid. Oh, then we'll get into that topic. You want to travel to another province. To simplify it to what Brent's saying, if we're all making fourteen thirty-five a month, that's what our disability income support level is, and we're not living in subsidized housing, then we would pay to our market rent places about four hundred and seventy-five dollars a month directly to them, and the and the government BC Housing would subsidize or rent assist the rest directly to the landlord. Mm -hmm. So yep. whatever the, my, 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 uh, monthly rent is $1,200. So I would pay 475 to my landlady and the BC housing would pay the remainder. Uh, and that, that would, uh, uh, keep me in the rental housing as there's not enough subsidized housing units here. A couple things on um, benefit on this, the government would also keep a nice cap on how much that rent goes up every damn year. Mm -hmm. yep. Number two, uh, the government would uh, be uh, in, uh, incentivized to get subsidized housing if they would, if it makes that economic sense not to be paying uh, the extra seven hundred dollars a month for one PWD mm -hmm. uh, like myself. So there would be an incentive to have uh, better accommodations, but in the meantime. No persons with disability medically assessed and designated in BC would be homeless. Yeah, I mean, my, yeah, my, my corporate landlord um, was on a waiting list for 12 years to get into subsidized housing once upon a time. So I told yeah. her exactly what our, um, our discussion we had with the minister was. Um, and before we hadn't gone to the meeting, I said, well, I was going to be discussing it. Yeah. And so I, I was told, she said, yeah, like she said, yeah, like that sounds brilliant. Brent. That's yeah. a brilliant idea because it will keep people housed. Exactly. And that's now she said there the housing costs are not going to get any better. They're not. They're going to keep going up the cost. And there's no and there's no limit on how you can how much you how much, how greedy you can be if you're renting your your unit. Whereas if this way, at least we have the 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 rent the landlady is assured monthly rent every month from the government yeah. and from the person with disability. They're assured <laughs> income all the time. Uh, and, and they're not allowed to like get all crazy and, and go greedy, greedy. So and I think that would cut down on a lot of rent evictions too, right? It would absolutely it would. try to try to rent evict the government. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, and it, it's only it's like a it's like a rent control in a way. Yeah. It is. It's right. like, an, yeah. but it keeps the PWD housed. And it'd exactly. be like and Big keeps, Brothers watching. So it'd be it's yeah, actually it keeps it's actually yeah. good. It keeps everybody yeah. else yeah. and. We have to pay a rent. We still have to pay our 30% of our income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a responsibility to the landlord. The government has a responsibility to keep everybody housed. 
<laughs> like they do in, in the UK. Uh, and, and Canada is sadly behind on that matter. Uh, but that was a wonderful discussion we had with Sheila yeah. about that. So maybe that's something. The point of the whole meeting was she was trying to figure out how she could utilize Brent and Sonia and myself to get the message back to our fellow uh, disabled PWD in, in BC and to keep things positive. And we were trying to uh, make sure that she understood that right now the system's broken and it's not acceptable and we will keep being loud and in their face and protesting and doing everything we can to, to be um, a, a burr in their saddle. Uh, until they fix things, so we're gonna yeah. have a we're gonna have a picnic on the legislature lawn. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but well, I know. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I know that uh, Sonia had mentioned a couple uh, good uh, questions yes. that she had to the minister too. Um, did you want to? Did you want to mention that to people? Yeah, Sonia, what did you uh, bring up with um, Sheila? Uh, why we had to wait so long for the one twenty-five? Yes. How come it took six months for the announcement from the announcement of uh, persons with disabilities who aren't homeless or who aren't mm -hmm. in subsidized housing? So a uh, restricted a number of persons with disabilities to receive an extra one hundred and twenty five dollars in an increase in the shelter portion from three seventy five to five hundred dollars a month. That was announced. What, February? That was at February 28th. And the minister's response on that was there's a uh, computer system that was last updated by a previous government in 2002. So it's 21 years, but it's going to take two more years to basically get the new state of the art system up. So all, really? so all the hamsters that were in the hamster wheels have all yeah. died. They're, they've all yes. expired. Yeah. And they have to get a new cart of hamsters. Just before dates. <laughs> they were, yeah, they were on disability to starve to death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, and you know, it's just ridiculous when I, 21 years, I mean, yeah. are you kidding me? I mean, can't get a new system in 21 years. So we it, haven't it, even received that extra $125 on the shelter no. until what, next month? Uh, actually, July 19th. And it's, it's here, coming up. Be on the, yeah. But here's the problem is that 125 increase is not going to benefit all PWD. Exactly. And, only and even, the, the minister even admitted that it's not going to go to uh, not going to benefit everybody. So and, when and they, that yeah. that's something that uh, when we had uh, Shane Simpson on, yeah, that's something that pissed him off. Remember, he says that that pisses me off. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was exactly the conversation that we had with him. I do mm -hmm. remember that. And, and he, he, he advocated uh, Jeff so much and everybody watching he, uh, the minister, former minister advocated so hard to get rid of the shelter portion yeah. because he says that he worried that it was only going to eventually going to go to the shelter and oh, not the was, support. And he yeah. said the support benefits everybody. Yeah. And, and unfortunately they chose, they chose yeah. to put to shelter rather than on support. purpose, on, on purpose. purpose. And, then gonna realize, and then they're going to realize after, Oh, wait a minute. We now don't need to fix that. Meanwhile, all the people that were supposed to get it, suffer yeah. in legislative poverty. For those who don't uh, live in BC, um, if you do not have a place to live, if you are homeless or do not have uh, market value rent, and there's a number of persons with disabilities who don't have a place to live, there's, they can't find anywhere to live, their, uh, their mental health disability or whatever does, does, does not uh, allow for them to have a secure housing, they don't mm -hmm. have subsidized housing, so for the people that don't have a place to live, they don't get fourteen ten a month. They mm -hmm. get fourteen ten minus three seventy five a month. So they get even less, and they're expected yeah. to live on that. And when the government announced, "Oh, the disabled people in in, in BC get an increase. We're given a hundred twenty five dollar increase to the shelter portion for persons with disabilities." The homeless disabled people don't get that, and the people exactly. living in subsidized housing as disabled people don't get that. So. A yep. smaller amount of the disabled people in BC are the only ones to receive that. So the ones that are needed the most, the yep. ones that are homeless, they can't afford a place to live. They can't find a place to live for three seventy-five a month, or five hundred dollars a month, or even like nine hundred dollars a month to give them yep. some sort of money to eat every month. 
they are the left out in the, in in the, uh, in the cold once again. So that's one thing we talked about. We got to treat everybody the same. You can't leave anybody behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, full full dignity, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean because it's it's dividing disabled people against disabled people. Yeah. You can yeah. have market housing. You can you can't have uh, subsidized housing. It's that divide, and or you don't have a physical address, but yeah. maybe. And here's another thing too is like. Uh, there's that conception of, uh, and I was talking to my corporate landlord about it, and I totally like she's right on our same page as us understanding this uh, this concept. I said, if you don't have a physical address, I said to her, if I didn't have a physical address where I live now, but you allowed me to stay with in one of the tenants living here uh, for oh I don't know three weeks, four weeks, oh but another tenant says hey yeah you can rent you can stay in my unit for another three weeks, four weeks. According to the government, that's not a fixed address. You yeah. don't get your 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 three seventy five shelter because it's not a fixed address. Meanwhile, you could be paying rent, but the government says no fixed address. You don't get that. So now you can still pay out of your money less than less than three seventy five to that land to whoever. Now you're no, even worse. No soup for you. Yeah, yeah no soup for you. <laughs> <laughs> we really need to dissolve this whole um, parameters and, and conditions of how much money you get. We really need the uh, government to recognize that every person that's medically assessed and designated person with disability in this province, for whatever reason, physical or mental, uh, um, has to be phys financially supported at no less than poverty level, first and foremost. After that, then you can start adding on your little conditions. But once we're once not until we're up to poverty level, should there be any clawbacks, nickel and diming? stabbing you in the back making you eat garbage there's none of, you know what i mean that's the that's the bottom line so yes. i think the people across canada that are waiting on the canada disability benefit awesome i went to royal ascent it's now law but it's going to take 12 to 18 months to get into effect so there's yeah. another we have to wait another 12 18 months for for those people we don't even know who those people are to be getting any kind of financial support so I think it's up to us and each province to really be uh, aggressive and assertive and loud and demanding mm -hmm. of our provincial governments, work with our provincial government uh, politicians. If uh, uh, if you're in Ontario and you got um, who's who's the jackass in Ontario as a premier? Uh, Doug Ford. Ford. So work with other people, work with other politicians to really put pressure on. In BC here, Brent and, and Sonia and Neil and I, we work with all the politicians. We work with Sonia, we work with the Green Party, we work yep. with the Liberal Party, we work with all parties to really put pressure on the government. To oh, fix oh the B, uh, B, B, BC United, BC United. The yeah. BC United, they changed their name because oh, oh, the liberals were not. I know, I, I do that too at BC. <laughs> it was, we, it was we, are, we are non-partisan. Yeah, we have to work yeah. with every yeah. single party yeah. to yeah. make sure that everybody understands this isn't a party issue. No, this is no. a human issue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Persons with disabilities can no longer be the ones that are, are kept in government imposed poverty for whatever reason, for, mm -hmm. for financial reasons, for stigma reasons, for discrimination reasons, for ignorance reasons. For no pink longer. unicorn reasons. For unicorn pink reasons. Unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> October is coming up. October is a National Disability Awareness Employment Month. Uh, so I think we got to really start looking for October to put pressure on all across the country once again when the governments are back sitting again. In the mm -hmm. meantime, reach out to politicians, reach out to your uh, MLAs, your MPPs, your MPs while they're at home doing all their photo ops and make yourself be heard. This mm -hmm. is enough. We can't do this anymore. I'm going to reach out to my MPs here. I'm going to go to events where I know Sheila's going to be, where uh, Sonia Firstenau is going to be, where David Eby, the Premier, is going to be, uh, where different politicians, Bonita Zarillo is going to be. And I'm going to actually make myself and make ourselves known to them that, hey, when is this going to happen? When is this mm -hmm. going to happen? When is or even, happen? Or even, uh, even BC United, like their leader, their new leader, uh, Kevin Falcon. Yes. Right? Yes. You know, I'm going to you know, hold his feet to the fire, too. Uh, exactly. uh, who's our guy yeah. from BC United? Uh, Kevin Falcon. No, who's our uh, MLA? The the MLA, Dan, Dan Davies. Oh, Dan Davies. Oh, Dan, 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 yeah. Dan Davies, yeah. yeah he's, yeah. he's back, too. And, you know, I was just going to, I'm glad you mentioned uh, that uh, Dan Davies. Um, is I remember there was a committee meeting that they had with Sheila Malcolmson 
Yep. And she and then uh, Sonia, first of all, they were actually on the meeting, and they were uh, the uh, Sheila had admitted that the um, so I think it was uh, Sonia, first of all, if I'm not mistaken, if I am, I, I apologize, it's not yeah. partisan. So it's either Dan Davies or, or Sonia, first of all, asked the minister about because the people are suffering so bad in legislated poverty, yeah. and uh, the minister admitted that uh, that it was the mindset how it was designed decades ago, the mindset. Yeah of that why the system the way it is is, is yeah. you know it's broken right oh it is absolutely she admitted she admitted that it's yeah. broken so yeah. when when they admit that it's broken well then do something yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. like That's and cool. they have the power to do it right and so i do know and i'm glad that you know like we, we when we talk about non partisan people watching it and, oh no you're taking sides no no we don't take sides no. we like to hear what different viewpoints that they all talk about and that we all work together um, yeah. as as uh, as a group. You've and you've you've officially now had um, all of the uh, BC parties on, yeah, uh, yeah. because um, you know you've you've had uh, the BC United party on now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dan Davies was on. Yeah. You we we've had um, Sonia Firstino on, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, we just haven't had the leader on yet from the BC United, but uh, that will be yeah. That'll be the Never yeah, that, that yeah, that'd be good. And and we've had we've had uh, we've had the BC NDP on, so we've yeah. we've we've covered them all, right? So it's, we're it's we're a, not we're not playing favorites. There's just, no, no, it's not a, it's not political. It's not a yeah. political no. issue. Yeah. It's a, and even the uh, even the minister yeah. for housing um, for the NDP um, is going to be coming on uh, sometime either later this month, I think, or maybe by the end of this month, hopefully, mm -hmm. or beginning. Of, I'm not quite sure, but uh, Ravi yeah. Ravi Kalon. Nice. Uh, Minister of Housing, uh, he's going to be joining us on on the show. Um, actually, Sheila Malcolmson is. Yeah. Uh, she had been asked to come on, so uh, I think Neil maybe reach back out to uh, yeah. her admin. Well, but uh, yeah, she definitely wants to come on. She she definitely said we'll, that we we'll, in... we'll have to give her free timbits as a yeah, as yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to yeah, come on the we'll, show. We'll entice her. We'll entice her. We'll, we'll, you know, Ent we, we'll... entice her with timbits. Yeah. As long as we don't throw some pink unicorns here at her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, For go. everybody out there, too, uh, just I'm going to wrap up here pretty soon here. Yeah. But I want you to remember that online on Twitter spaces and everything, if you're uh, in need of some food, in need of some assistance, in need of uh, uh, investor angel, please reach out online on Twitter spaces. Um don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Don't be whatever. This is how we survive. This is how we, we continue. Uh, if you're a disability advocate across Canada, don't be disillusioned. We have to, and we are going to win this. And if we have to play by their rules or their games, we'll do that. If we have to be loud and be um, uh, persistent mm -hmm. and, and stuff, we will do that as well. And if we have to form so-called alliances with anybody on every uh, every party we will do that as well mm -hmm. so um we our goal is poverty level no less than poverty level if you want to have a different goal god bless you i will give you my strength and my my support but this is our goal no less than poverty level across canada for any person with disability uh in canada and if the government chooses to be mbm or lico we'll deal with it but that's mm -hmm. what we're, that's what our goal is. So I wish everybody a happy summer. Uh, and uh, I thank Brent and Neil for having me on today. This is beautiful. Yeah. It's always wonderful having you join uh, Jeff, you know, and you know, anytime that you want to come on, just reach out to myself or, uh, or Neil and, you know, um, because Hey, you know, advocacy never takes a break. Uh, it never takes a break. Uh, and I, uh, you know, people are suffering so bad in this country. We just want people to know that we're here. Like we're here for you. If you want to, you know, come on to the show. We'll uh, schedule uh, some time uh, in the summer uh, for yeah. you to come on. And uh, maybe if you only want to be on for a half hour segment, hey, that's fine. Like, I mean, Perfect. we will do it. And if there's a bunch of you that want to come on in, in one day and it's only half hour, hey, yeah. I mean, we can get four people on in one day, right? In, short, <laughs> in a short time frame. Love. Um, but Derb, Derb, yes, Derb, Derb, that's it. In the meantime, we'll keep pushing for Derb. I, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be doing a lot of traction with it. The politicians don't seem to be too hungry with that idea, mm -hmm. but it's okay. We'll cram it down their throat, right? Because mm -hmm. really, I mean, people need that money to survive. If they're going to take a year, a year and a half, I'm hearing 18 months yeah. uh, for that, that kind of disability benefit. 
in the meantime, there needs to be an emergency amount to disability emergency response benefit in the meantime. It's like CERB, how, how it was. I mean, look how quickly the, uh, the um, prime minister got that out. And then when he was questioned by media, well, who is it going to go to? What if they, what if they don't qualify? You know what? what he says, yeah, let's just, I remember that one line, he got his hand. Let's just, we'll get it out there. We'll, we'll get it out to everybody who needs it. Exactly. Yeah, un same. unfortunately, I think it's, uh, unfortunately, I think it's, you know, the, the provinces are all waiting on the federal government to see what they're going to do first, yeah. you know, and yeah. and uh, it's like, it's, fire, the, they're, they're, they're putting, they're putting the ball in the, uh, in the hands of the federal government saying, you play with it now. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll join you when we figure out what game you're playing kind of thing. So, but now it's backfired on them because they were waiting yeah. and they, I think they anticipated the feds were going to do a lot quicker. Now they're mm -hmm. not. So yeah. now we're going to keep putting pressure on the provincial governments because yeah. obviously you know the feds are going to just take their sweet old time, right? And the best way to do that, folks, in every province out there, if you're a disability advocate, put pressure on the provincial government by aligning yep. with the opposition government yep. to put forth motions for an increase, immediate increase of $300 a month uh, for the programs for disabled in your province. Yeah. Pick a number, yeah. 300, yeah. pick a number, 500, 250, pick a number and get your opposition party to hammer, hammer, hammer. Yeah, and, and as, a, with... as a reminder, it is Dan Davies in BC. Yes. Yeah. It is Dan Davies and it is Sonia Fersenau. Uh Those are the two people that I would uh, I would go to to put pressure on Sheila Malcolm Clinton in BC. Uh, it's yeah. different in every province, but p p please feel free, p please feel free to uh, to reach out to your politicians and use them to your advantage. You're not just asking the one in charge, but asking the ones that are uh, putting the, the the fire, the feet to the fire for the ones that are in charge. You know, so and, and people there. in the BC wonder, well, who Dan Davies is? Uh, Dan Davies is actually the opposition critic for the Ministry of Social Development and Poverty Reduction. So he's the one that's going to hold the minister, whoever minister is in charge right now in, in BC, uh, which is Honorable uh, Sheila Malcolmson is the minister currently in charge. So Dan Davies is one holds for account. Uh, and Sonia Fersno is the other other opposition leader. So she's holding the government to account. Mm -hmm. The next uh, provincial election is scheduled for October of 2024. Yeah. Uh, well, we, We'll see what happens, um, you know, because who knows, anything can change. Right now, they're all saying, no, there's no election. There's no election until then. If there is, right, in the meantime, we need to hammer away because we need to get the proper support in place now so people are not suffering any longer. Um, inflation's going up. We now have a uh, strike at the port of Vancouver, and it's affecting all the, uh, the goods and services. Uh, and right now, it isn't. But if it continues for a longer period of time, it's going to affect the cost of living for Canadians across the whole country. So with that being said, uh, we need to get these rates increased. So that's going to help people. Yeah. Uh, next month, there is the GST is coming out. No, this week. Or, or, sorry, this week. Today sorry, is. me bad, me bad. Yeah, yeah. this uh, actually on Wednesday, is. GST is coming out. The grocery rebate, which is a double GST. It's just a yeah. fancy name they wanted to call it. That's what they promised back there. They just quietly sneak it in they there. They should just call it the double double. It's oh, called the right? double double, but it's a one shot <laughs> deal. And, you know, and that's the problem. It's only a one shot deal. It's going to get gobbled up that fast because of the cost of living. It's called breadcrumbs. Uh, yeah, the breadcrumbs. <laughs> All the breadcrumbs, and you know, if it needs to be a, a predictable amount for every every Canadian person with disabilities going forward. Yeah. And how do we do it? Easy tax tax the ultra rich. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one more thing: uh, if you if you don't know what to do, or you know how you can help, if you're sitting at home, you're 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 uh, you're at home, confined at home for whatever reason. If you're online, tag every politician's um, uh, post or social media uh, post with "No More Poverty PWD" yep. with "Disability Without Poverty" hashtags. Every time they see that, they they get sick and tired of seeing it. It makes it makes them. That's the reason we get our, our meeting with uh, Sheila Malcolmson is because we are a, a burr in her saddle. And David Eby's posts are always tagged 
and all their posts are, are always tagged and they see that and they're like, okay, you know what? We got to address this because mm-hmm. people will keep seeing this. So if you're at home, please tag politicians posts from across the country from federal to provincial and don't let them forget that we're, we're living in government imposed poverty and it's unacceptable. Yeah, we maybe we should have David Eby join on the show too. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeff. I gotta run. I see you later. Yeah. yeah. Happy summer. Thanks, everyone. Happy summer. And when you want to come on in the summer uh, later, let me know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks everyone for tuning in today uh, for another great episode of Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. Please subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.